Welcome to Tipmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing June 14th with me, Patrick Mullinick. The highlights of the week ahead will undoubtedly be Wednesday's FOMC meeting. Financial markets go into the meeting with the conviction call that the Fed and ECB liquidity is firmly in place for the summer and that the only game in town is to search for carry amidst declining levels of volatility. While the Fed may be a little nearer to discussing tapering, I don't expect the statement or new projections or uh, Chair Powell's press conference to unsettle markets. After all, markets seem quite comfortable with the view that the Fed tapering could start in December this year with the first rate hike in early 2023. Assuming nothing too hawkish emerges, expect traded volatility levels to take another leg lower as the carry trade rolls on. US days in next week, be it retail sales or industrial production, looks unlikely to move markets and instead the carry environment could increase focus on yield opportunities in emerging markets. Russia hiked 50 basis points on Friday and may well do another 50 basis points in July. Brazil should hike 75 basis points this week and both Russia and Turkey are in focus ahead of President Biden's meeting with Turkish and Russian presidents in the week ahead. From a technical perspective, as the dollar holds the 90 level of support, there's a chance now to make a move up into the 91.50. From there, I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions, targeting the next leg to the downside, uh, initially looking at 88.70. In terms of the Eurozone, Friday saw the Euro uh, offered across the board as the market digested the implications of the ECB meeting. For example, is the US dollar or the Euro the best funding currency for this summer? The opinion by most market watchers is that the US dollar should marginally lose out and we will see low volatility rally in the Euro this summer, perhaps even up to the 125 area. The calendar in the week ahead looks very light and perhaps there will be more of a focus on the US-EU summit and some word on the global tax deal. Should the FOMC not unnerve markets, I would be looking for the euro dollar to uh, can pull back here, but then extend up uh, into the late summer. So from a technical perspective, what we're looking at is uh, the outside reversal candle on Friday. Should see prices now touch down to test uh, the prior dis descending trendline resistance now to act as support at the 120 and certainly we have monthly range support at 119.73 and the major ascending trendline support coming in 11950. So this zone, watch for bullish reversal patterns set long positions targeting move up through the 123.55 price cycle highs onto monthly range resistance at 123.70. In terms of Japan, uh, Japan has seemed to have performed poorly with its handling of the virus. Nine uh, prefectures are still in lockdown and only 11% of Japan's population have had their first vaccine doses, compared to above 50% levels in the US and the UK. Yet lockdowns are working, case numbers are falling, and reopening of the economy uh, could be constructive story for Japan later this summer. Uh, this is the backdrop for Friday's BOJ meeting. Uh, expect the BOJ to still sound reasonably upbeat, although uh, none of its key policy levers set to be adjusted for quite a while. Uh, the data calendar this week, uh, May and also national, uh, sorry, trade data for May and also national CPI expected at 0.2% year on year. From a technical perspective, uh, while the dollar yen now holds uh, below the 109.70, still see the chance for a three-way corrective pattern to develop to test the 108.40 level of support before making a move higher. If we can take out the 110 level on a closing basis, then look for a move up into monthly range resistance at 111. In terms of sterling in the UK, uh, with the risk environment to remain supported next week and the uh, cautious Fed unlikely to uh, reverse the current US dollar softening, um, domestically, while it looks more and more likely that the 
June 21 restriction easing date will be postponed, the impact on the economy should be very limited. If anything, in terms of the near-term downside risk to sterling, the focus should remain on the UK-EU trade tensions. Uh, the risks around the implementation of the Northern Ireland Protocol is possible breach from the UK and the subsequent EU tariffs. Uh, that could uh, lean on sterling. On the data front, a uh, busy week for the UK. The May CPI will be released on Wednesday. Expected to rise 1.8% year over year and moving above 2% later this year. But with inflation to normalise lower in 2022, the case for imminent tightening is really not in place. The UK April employment data will be released on Tuesday, um, should improve further, reflecting the reopening of the economy, while May uh, retail sales released on Friday should increase further as well. So from a technical perspective, sterling uh, pullback on the close on Friday, uh, we're still just holding the monthly pivot 140.80. Um, whilst we hold that as support, there is the potential for another leg higher here to test 143. However, if we get a close through the monthly pivot and the uh, ascending trend line support there at 140.50, uh, then look for a pullback to test the monthly range support 138.36 before the next leg higher. And last but not least, in Australia, Thursday's job data for the month of May in Australia will be the last key release before the 9th of July Reserve Bank of Australia meeting, when changes to the shape and possibly the size of the QE will be unveiled. Uh, look for a rather strong headline print um, with respect to the unemployment rate dropping from 5.5% to 5.4%, and this should be a welcome development by those expecting a less dovish RBA as it brightens the inflation outlook for the second quarter after the underwhelming first quarter reads. Uh, in the week ahead, we also see the minutes from June's RBA meeting. Any anticipation about where the discussion about tweaking QE in July is heading will move the market, although I expect we'll see, uh, we won't see much on that topic. The RBA Governor Philip Lowe will also deliver a speech on Thursday, although he's scheduled to speak before the release of the jobs report, so there may not be any relevant policy comments. From a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar continues to find resistance here at the 7770 area of the monthly pivot. And whilst we hold that as resistance, I'm looking for a move down to test the monthly range support 75 70 area uh, before we can look for bullish reversal patterns at long positions looking for uh, another leg to the upside. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 14th of June.